Hi and welcome everyone to this community call, Walking the Wheel with the Transits. Today we are still in Gene Key Gate Hexagram 56 and tonight here in the US it's going to change over to Hexagram 31. So today we're going to include both. I will focus on the 31 in the presentation and then as we're weaving we can bring in the 56 as well. They are both living in the throat. So they have some things in common and they also have some things that are different. So let's focus on the 31st. We call this archetype the visionary. It's in transit from July 25th to July 30th. In human design, we call this the gate of leading. In the I Ching, this hexagram is called influence. In the gene keys, we go from the shadow of arrogance to the city of humility and the human pathway, the gift frequencies leadership. This is from two years ago when Ashley and Rachel and Ash and some other people were playing with universal city and city not spelled like a city where you live, but city as the city in the highest frequency of the gene keys. And yeah, the visionary who can see into the future. This is collective circuitry and it connects us to a better or a more constructive pattern for humanity. Here we're looking at it from an I Ching perspective. So we are in the part in the wheel where we're going to have the mountain trigram on the bottom. The mountain trigram is two yin lines and one yang line. It looks like a mountain, <laughs> literally. And you have the other archetypes here that also have this trigram on the bottom, which is the 15, the wild woman or the wild man, the 52, the mountain, the 39, the liberator, the 53, the initiator, the 62, the scientist, the 56, the comedian, then like we said, the visionary, and then gate 33, the medicine woman. And when you look at the wheel, you are going to see that there are eight different elements. And this is, of course, out of the combination of having six yin and yang lines. In this specific case, we are going to see that we have the mountain on the bottom and lake on top. And here you see the old name we used to call this archetype, the precedent. And even just with what's happening in the US and around the world with precedents and politics, I think it's amazing that we changed it to the visionary uh, because it's a, it is a leadership for good or bad, but the archetypes, if you have gone and looked at them in the 64 doors that we have really chosen to, or I chose to write those descriptions as anchored in the gift frequency where there is, it's really to be stable there. So we are bringing in some of Richard Rudd's words for the shadow and the repressive and the reactive, uh, but really the actual archetypes are in the gift frequency. So I really like the change from the precedent to the visionary. And Ash and I are revisiting the keywords for the archetypes now and possibly even some of the names. Like I said, we had lake on top of this one. And when we look at the geometry, because 58 is made up of two trigrams of lake and the 52 is made up of two trigrams of mountain, we could say that the 31 is a combination of these two energies. So the shadow of arrogance is the dissatisfaction of stress. The gift of leadership is the vitality of restraint. And the city of humility is the bliss of stillness. Then we're looking at the astrology. We just changed signs yesterday on the 22nd. So it went from Cancer to Leo, the fourth sign to the fifth sign. This is fixed fire. Leo is the roaring heart of the fire that radiates love in all directions. Leo is the illuminated leader and the courageous creator. It is service to self-growth through the will of intuition and manifestation. We have the sun as the ruler of Leo, and it also corresponds to the fifth house in modern astrology. It is in the part of the wheel where we have the integration of self with the environment. And if you're interested in learning foundational astrology, to add that to the language of the Gene Keys, we have the setup series, which are 12 roadmaps that are now evergreen masterclasses. Every month we're adding like an initiation call or welcome call where we are going into looking at the ruler of that specific sign. This month is the sun, the ruler, what does it mean to have it in the 12 houses and signs? 
Uh, it really becomes a foundational course that allows you to weave human design and jinkies together with astrology. So that is something to recommend. And here we see the quarter of civilization. We're getting to the end of the quarter of civilization. This is what's where purpose is fulfilled through form. If you have one of those gates or the godheads that are connected to this part of the wheel, then you're probably going to like to see things manifest in form. Also, in this part of the wheel, we have a lot of throat gates, which is the, the center that has to do with metamorphosis and manifestation. And I believe that's what we're going to see in the next slide. Yes, so here we have the body graph and we see the center that is about communication, manifestation, and expression. This is the gate of leading. And we have a lot of different archetypes that are living here in the throat center. So we also have the 56, which is where we are right now in the sixth line today. And here we're looking at the entire channel and we're looking at the theme. So this is the channel of the alpha, a design of leadership for good or bad. So it could be the precedent. <laughs> this is a projected channel. And the theme, you're designed to be picked out of the crowd one day to be the leader, elected by the people to represent the people. We have keywords for the visionary, influence, leadership, and vision. And this is what Ashley and I are actually working with. We're changing so that no two gates are going to have the same keywords. So here for the alpha in, in this old version, we still have direction and leadership. When we look at the whole entire channel, we're going to have a frequency band. This comes from integral human design that Richard Dredd created with Werner Pitzel over, I think it's almost 15 years ago now. So when you have arrogance and division in the shadow, in the whole theme, it becomes the shadow of command. When you have the gift of guidance and leadership, it becomes the gift of facilitation. And when you have the city of humility and virtue, it becomes the city of omnipotence. And here we see the wheel. So we have the 31 in Leo and the 41 in Aquarius, two different types of leadership. Both are connected to the future and what's coming. You also see that they're opposites in the hexagram structure, wherever the 31 has the yin, yin line, the 41 is going to have a yang line. And here's the last part we're going to, we're looking at collective circuitry, where it's about sharing. There are two types of collective circuitry. One is abstract and one is logical. The, the abstract is going to connect to the emotional center. It's not logical. It's emotional abstract. And then the logical is going to connect to the splenic center. We could say the abstract is more feminine, creative. We could say that the logical is more left-brained, more masculine in its way. So here we are looking at the part that is logical and we call it the understanding circuit. And that's all the archetypes or all the gates that are in the part of the wheel that is pink. And here you also see the Kundalini spiral. So you can see that it changes in the brain and it changes in the root. So it's a kind of spiraling energy that goes up through the body. And this is the energy we're here to liberate and mutate through so that's the presentation and let's take a quick look at a couple of other things just where we are in the transits we had a full moon two days ago in capricorn and now the moon has moved on and is on the cusp in, in pisces and 55 and quite a lot of leo energy with the sun Venus and Mercury. And the reflector chart today, quite a lot of throat gates are activated. And then one potential subject, I guess I'm speaking all about politicians and rulers today, but I wanted to bring that this in to the conversation. This is out of Hitler's chart. And you can see that he has 31.1 1 as his purpose sphere. He's anchored into that first line of the 31. And then, of course, the programming partner on the other side. And he has a completely open ego center. I think it's quite interesting. 
And I'm looking at this and I'm like, huh, okay, I have the 39.6 in my north node. I have the 38.6 in my south node. The 31 is my attraction sphere. The 41 is my Mercury. The seven is my purpose. The 2.4 that he has twice is my life's work. The 57 is my Saturn and my vocation. The 32 is my Saturn. The 11.5 is my Neptune. The 13.6 is my radiance. This is my nodal environment on this side. I basically have exactly the same gates. Uh, I have the fifth in my Pluto. And I also have a completely open ego center. I have an undefined emotional center. I have open head and Ashna. <laughs> I don't know what can go, go wrong. A lot of things can go wrong. I have exactly the same gates in the head and the Ashna as he has. If you also recognize yourself in this chart, let's have fun with it. Well, I also have this, if we want to go into the lines and speak about each line and try to understand the simplified version from the 64 keys, we can do that. And we can also go deeper into this. But right now, let's just say that the verb for the 31, according to Abaxus 3D, which is another system that incorporates astrology together with a color coding of the hexagrams. So here we see that the verb is to fall in love. Beautiful, right? Because you need to basically connect, fall in love in order to have influence. If they don't love you, if they don't see you, how are you going to lead? So it's really about this projected channel, getting the energy to actually be able to go forward because it's not connected to the motor, it's not connected to the sacral center. So to fall in love so that we can go together in the future or for towards the future. You also see in the color coding, like we said before, this is lake and mountain. But if we look at it with the color coding of astrology, we have a combination of a Libra or seven house energy on the bottom, and then a Taurus energy or a second house energy on top. So Taurus and Libra. And then we actually see that both of these are connected to Venus because Venus is the ruler. And then maybe actually Venus love that kind of thing, it makes more sense that it is to fall in love. 